As you can see, I've cleaned the calculator. It's come up uh, quite reasonable and um, we can now get on and try and repair it. I've actually removed the actuator adder bar, so this uh, sits in here. I've taken it out, we'll come back to this in a few minutes. Uh, but um, once I've cleaned this, as I was going through the cleaning process, um, the various levers and, and uh, pivots started freeing up and um, some just clicked back into the correct location as I was cleaning them. So um, there are still some that are sticking and some of the keys are jammed down, I can't release them and I think that's because it's part way through a cycle. So what I need to do is um, get it to either complete the cycle or wind it back to the start just so it frees everything up and then I can start trying to free up all the pivots and levers. So the way I'm going to do this is looking at the back we've got this assembly here. I'll just bring the light down, I hope you can see it a bit better. Um, now this is the motor and we've got this gearbox here. And this was actually greased. Uh, somebody greased um, these discs and they shouldn't be greased. These are actually the slip rings for the motor. So these are motor brushes. It's a DC or AC motor. And uh, these shouldn't be greased. If you grease them, chances are the motor is not going to work properly. So I cleaned those uh, when I was cleaning it up. And uh, all I've done so far is clean this. I haven't really re-lubricated it apart from the main pivots and this pivot up here. The rest is just uh, dry at the moment. I want to try and figure out where it's tight. And um, so what I can do is try rotating this. It won't turn forwards. It's kind of seems to have gone so far and then jammed. What I should be able to do is turn this uh, backwards and get the entire machine to wind back. It's quite tight so um, what I'm going to have to do as I turn this is try to um, encourage the various levers and pivots to move as I try to rotate this. I don't want to just force the motor because it could break something else. And if I can get it to the home position all the keys should at least be in a position where I should be able to get them to free up. If they're jammed then at least I know they're in a position where nothing should be holding them and then I won't damage anything if I try to free them up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and get this wound back to the start uh, I'll do it off camera, it could take a while and luckily there is access through the base of this so if we tip it on its side I've also removed the rubber mat that uh, this sits on and there's quite a lot of access through these openings on the bottom so I should be able to get to most of it and hopefully I can at least get it to the end or the start of the cycle and then we can start looking at freeing the rest of it up. Okay, well that took a bit of uh, effort but I managed to get it wound back to the start and uh, the keys now will at least all move. I've been going through and I've started lubricating the various parts and now it's in the kind of home resting position. Uh, all the levers and uh, latches should at least be in a position where they're free to be returned to their home positions. So I've been going through the keys, I don't know how well this will come across but um, this uh, first row, you can see the keys now all move very nice and freely and I've been working my way down through the uh, various columns and this one I haven't done yet and hopefully you can tell the difference. Some of these keys are very tight so I'll get these lubricated and then hopefully you'll be able to see the difference. So that's all the keys freed up and lubricated, hopefully you can now see the difference. This takes very light force and that's how they should operate. And um, the next thing I'm going to look at is I want to be able to check the motor and see if it's um, feasible to run it. I can't run it through a full cycle yet because the rest of the machine is too tight. But I want to check that the um, motor contacts and the uh, actuator actually works the way it should and that comes back to this thing. So the reason I've taken this off is this is bent, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not but uh, this should be uh, straight, at least this end, there's a dog look at this end but this uh, end should be straight and it's obviously got a very pronounced bend in it so this section 
is kind of bent over this way. And uh, it looks like what's happened is normally the uh, addition key sits on here. So when it's in the case, this is on here. Got to take this off to get the calculator out of the case. Uh, so it looks like it was dropped on its side. It was badly packaged when it arrived and um, I think uh, the, the box had been dropped and it pushed this over and it's bent this over. And also the uh, this shaft is also bent. It's bent up uh, this way. So I need to straighten this out and I need to straighten this out. Uh, once I've straightened this, I can refit it and then we can check to see if the, uh, the motor operation is uh, at least the motor contacts are working and what I can start doing then is winding the motor through its uh, full cycle but this needs to be in first because this kind of uh, starts the process off so when the machine's um, running or ready to go you just press this key down and then it puts the machine into the start of cycle what it effectively does is just raise this lever uh, you could do that manually of course as I've just done and then wind it forward but uh, I need to get this done anyway I have lubricated all the pivots I can get to in here, but um, I want to get this back in just so I can check uh, everything that this works on because this is kind of the starting point for the cycle, so I might as well do this first. That's the start bar refitted. I can't remember if I mentioned why I took this off to start with. It was because this was bent under and it was jamming, so when I tried to push this down, it wedged against this bar. Uh, which is why I took it off in the first place but now as you can see it's perfectly free when I did this before it would go down and then just wedge down and that wedges this uh, part and jams up the mechanism so uh, now that's nice and free now the other thing this does apart from raising this lever to allow the uh, th this is the control cam for the cycle so there's a notch at this point and that stops the machine at the end of the cycle and to start the machine you have to raise this pull and it releases this catch. There's a kind of a step on the cam here and raising this allows the uh, cam to rotate. But of course the motor has to be told to start up. So the other function of this lever is be hard to see but there's a pair of contacts down here. Lower the light of it and hopefully you can see behind this uh, insulator there are two contacts so the one at the front is to control the power to the motor and the one at the back is actually just a connection to a filter capacitor I'm not really sure why they're separate whether it's because they wanted them to operate at slightly different times um, but the two contacts are basically wired together so uh, the capacitor and the motor are wired in pretty much at the same time so what we can do now is see if we're getting anything on the motor at all. I don't know if this motor's uh, viable, whether it's open circuit or short circuit or whatever, but uh, we'll get this connected. If we can see the meter. And when I push this down, we should, if the contacts are okay and the motor's okay, we should see the motor resistance on the meter. 173 ohms, fairly reasonable. And it's fairly consistent, so it looks like the contacts are okay as well. If we didn't get anything at all when I did this, I'd look at the contacts next, and if they were okay, we'd obviously check the motor separately, but it does look like the uh, motor could well be feasible. I don't want to power it up just yet because uh, everything's still jammed up and this machine has obviously been sitting around for a very long time and as evidence of that this is the ribbon and as you can see it's been in this position for quite some time so uh, it's kind of petrified uh, in that shape so i won't refit this just yet um, i need to find some fairly narrow ribbon but uh, for now the next thing i need to do is to start trying to free this up so the way I'm going to go about this is I can now actuate the start of cycle which is basically the addition uh, key that should raise this pull free up this gear and engage the motor so I can then start to try and turn this and it's turning but it's really tight so what I'm going to do now 
is, and incidentally, this thing here is a speed uh, governor, centrifugal governor, and uh, if it's, as this spins up, if it spins beyond a certain speed, these contacts open and disconnect power to the motor. Uh, and as it slows down again, they close back up, reapply power, and that just uh, controls the speed of the motor. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do now is start turning this, find out uh, if it, as it sticks, find out what's sticking, just look for the linkages that are going tight, try and free them up, lubricate them, and then move on to the next until I can do a complete cycle. And I need to be able to turn this relatively freely. Th these are always a little bit tight, especially when they haven't been used for so long, but I should still be able to turn this by hand. If I can't turn it by hand, chances are the motor would burn out if I try to apply power to it. So um, again, I won't bore you with this, but the process is fairly straightforward. Just turn the motor till it jams up, look for something that's gone tight, and uh, that usually can take quite a bit of tracking down because some of the things will already be tight in their normal mode of operation. But it's just trying to find a thing that's stopping it from turning uh, and then free it up and um, just progress until it will go through a complete cycle. Okay, I've been going through the machine. It's taken about uh, probably an hour and a half. Gone through all the linkages, freed them up, um, lubricated the pivots certain bits I still need to lubricate but I don't want to do that until I've kind of run the machine up. Some of it's just to stop it wearing. It's not really going to make it turn more freely. It does now turn through a, uh, a full cycle relatively easily. Uh, what I found is there is indeed a piece missing from this. It's just one of the paper reel supports. There should be one of these on the other side and that's that screw that we found in the previous video but it will rotate quite uh, nicely without that there so we can come back to that later. Uh, all the rest of it, some of the pivots um, were jammed up and I've uh, freed those off. Some are still a little bit sticky but not too bad. Um, this is nowhere near as difficult to work on as the Fryden because most of the pivots on this are fairly loose and there's nowhere near as many of them. Uh, all the keys, um, as I said, I freed these up and also freed up the uh, cancel uh, rockers as many keys as I could I've got working, so in theory uh, this should now go through a cycle under the power of the motor. I've uh, lubricated all the major pivots and what I'm going to do is rather than apply 240 volts to this which could damage something if anything's jammed up, I'm going to run it from the bench supply. Because of the way the motor works it will run quite happily on DC so we can try and run this up and see if it will go through a complete cycle. I can't find anything that needs adjusting. One thing that's on here that does need fixing is this spring that we noticed at the beginning of the um, previous video. Is the wrong spring. It should be one like this. Somebody's obviously changed it at some point. Uh, so I will swap that spring out at some point for one the right size. Uh, in the box when I got this was also this spring. Now it doesn't match or appear to match any of the springs that are on here so I don't think it's off this machine and I can't find anywhere where there's a missing spring um, but just uh, keep this in the back of our mind in case something doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Shaft on here is still bent but it seems to uh, the roller seems to rotate okay and I can't find anything else that's uh, kind of bent or misshapen uh, this lever uh, was slightly out, it was pulled down slightly too far and it was dragging on the cam so I've backed it off very slightly. Uh, but now I'll get some power applied and we'll see what the machine actually does. I've got the bench power supply set to 35 volts and that should be enough to rotate the motor if there's no load on it. So I'm going to wind the motor back so that it's slightly short of the end of the uh, the main cycle so there's nothing really that it's trying to drive. We'll turn the power on, on the supply and when I now push this lever down it should energize the motor and hopefully the motor is going to spin. I don't know if the motor actually works yet but uh, fingers crossed we should see it rotate. Okay good. So the motor span, it went the right way and um, it won't have the power to can see it sparking on the contacts but uh, it won't have the power to drive at such a low voltage um, but we'll just try one more time turn the power
power back on and we'll try that again okay good so what I'm going to do now is increase the uh, voltage will go up to 70 volts this, these are just kind of uh, arbitrary values I'm picking here but uh, we'll set it to 70 volts and that should be enough to give it a bit more uh, drive and we should see it spin uh, quite a bit faster Power on. Okay, and even started driving up the cam there, so that's a good sign. As I said, I have rotated this all the way around a couple of times. It's a little bit tight there. So it has started going through the cycle. There we are. Okay, I've got the bench supply set to 90 volts and we'll try applying power to the motor and see if it can get any further around the cycle. It might well complete a full cycle this time, which it did. Okay, I'm going to try it again and release, I'll release this straight away and it should go to the end of the cycle and stop itself. It has done. Well, it's not stopping in the right place, it's stopping slightly short, but that might be because it doesn't have enough momentum to finish the operation. We'll try now pressing a couple of keys down, and these should all zero themselves um, by the time it gets to the end of the cycle, so we should see all these pop up again. Which it did. Try that again with some different keys. Okay, so that's doing what it's supposed to, and um, I'm going to turn the voltage up a little bit further. It's only drawing about 300 milliamps, so that's quite a, a, a promising sign. It means it's running relatively freely, so it's running at a much lower voltage than it would normally uh, operate from. So we'll increase the voltage. Okay, it's now set to 110 volts. Push a few keys down again. Okay, and it's now going very close to the end of the cycle, so I think it will go right to the end um, once it's got enough speed to complete the uh, entire cycle. So we'll try driving that one more time. And again, we can see that the print head is doing what we would expect. You can see these coming up briefly, moving across as if they're trying to print, uh, and then popping back down again. Good. Right, what I'm going to do now is put the old ribbon back in. Just turn the power off. I'm going to put the old ribbon back in. Let's give it a bit of a clean. Uh, don't have a ribbon the right width to replace it with. Uh, and then just find a piece of paper to drop in there and see if uh, it will actually print anything onto the paper. So I've cut a strip of paper two and a half inches wide and uh, threaded that in. I've refitted the original ribbon so it might not print anything at all but usually they, they do show something even if they're this old. And um, I need to straighten this shaft still, you can see it's bent. And uh, we'll try and cycle this and see if it actually does anything. So I'll try entering a number, turn the power on, actuate it and see if anything appears on the paper. Also see if the paper advances Okay, well the three uh, columns that I pressed the keys down on actually did something, but there's nothing showing on the paper. Maybe a very faint sign. We'll try something else. Okay, well it's going through the motion, but I've got a feeling the ribbon is just too badly worn. Try one more time. Okay, well I can see some very faint characters, so it looks like it's working. I just think I need to find a new ribbon and then uh, we'll be fine. I'm going to just try, um, before we finish this video, is just manually winding this forward a little bit 
and see if any part of the ribbon is viable. Okay, so we'll try that again. All I've done is wind the ribbon forward about five or six turns. Okay, well it's, uh, it is printing but it's so faint it's almost impossible to see and chances are you can't see it at all. Um, but I think it would work with a new ribbon so the next step is to try and locate a suitable ribbon for it. Can't really go much further until I've done that because um, there is no kind of store we can look at in this. All the additions are done on paper so we need to know what's happening on the output of the machine. You can kind of see it from this if you look at these bars um, but um, you'd have to try and keep track of exactly where the uh, or what the number is that's currently uh, effectively in memory which is what this really represents and this is what I was saying about these working similar to an electronic calculator and that this really represents the output register and this represents the input register. So anyway once we've got a new ribbon fitted we'll be able to put this through its paces and then try and figure out which functions work and which don't. I've got a feeling that we're not too far from having a fully functional machine. It does rotate fairly freely. It's still only at 110 volts and it's still uh, running around at a reasonable speed. So um, it's actually not as noisy as I was expecting either. I, was, I thought it'd be far noisier than this, but uh, we'll see what happens when it starts running up at full speed.